early birds hang on. Trying to uh, get the live stream to both the ham radio now show. There we go. And the ham radio now group. Takes a moment. Okay. <clears throat> We're going live. Alert the media. <laughs> oh, wait. We are the media. It's, it's dark here in the ham radio now studio. Lights are off. Radios are off. One lonely light shining in my face. Most of the cameras are off. Just this one over my shoulder. See how dark it is in here. It's because this isn't a show. I need uh, I need some help. Need your help. Uh, let's title this anyway. It's not a, it's not going to be an episode, but I'll title it anyway, because I stuck something on Facebook. Kids these days. I'm Gary Pierce, KN4AQ. When I did the the Kickstarter to fund heading down to St. Petersburg and record the Tapper Digital Communications Conference, I got three enterprise level <laughs> corporate contributions of 500 bucks a piece that is not chicken feed one is from tapper one is from chud i got um i got a response from chud because he has had been trying to tell me what he wanted to promote and uh, uh his emails kept failing to get to me something wasn't working so it finally got to me so the next time we do one of these you'll hear a short message from chud Chud, I asked how to pronounce your name. It's a nickname, and I hope I've got it right. And if I don't, and you see this, let me know. <clears throat> All right. And the third was from that anonymous guy who wanted to still be anonymous, but his suggestion was spend a little bit of time encouraging hams to bring young people into ham radio by perhaps giving them a book. Not a bad idea. And I thought, um, well, uh, in the first uh, episode that I put online, I looked at some books in the ARL bookstore, looked over at W5YI, didn't see a lot of stuff that would be appropriate for someone who's maybe just dipping a toe into ham radio, just kind of wetting their interest. But uh, you know, plenty once they've gotten to the point of, well, I need to learn something now and get a ham license. So I thought what I would do is get online here, um, live, but I'll, I'm recording this for YouTube. Facebook doesn't allow me to send out a stream to YouTube as well as to Facebook at the same time. I'm not sure. Yeah, if I've got a YouTube stream, this is in Wirecast in this, uh, <coughs> this thing over here, my uh, studio in a box. If I set it up in Wirecast and I, I set up a uh, Facebook stream and then I try to set up a YouTube stream and I try to tell it to go, I get a warning box that says, Facebook doesn't allow sending something to multiple places. I don't say YouTube specifically, but they, yeah, to any other place. I guess it's not just YouTube. Anyone else, they want, they want it all. They say, you can record, which I'm doing. Yeah, I am doing that. You can record and send it later, but in terms of being live, we want the whole thing. We're greedy that way. So, okay, Facebook. Not, not so worried about the live stuff anyway. All right, so a book. What would you recommend? Do you, do you have any suggestions for a book? that you think might whet the appetite of a young person. And by young person, I'm not sure what I mean. Um, teens, 20s, by our standards, even early, mid-30s as a young person. 
so uh, I'm, I'm reminded that uh, uh, Mike um, 80, 87, no, what's Mike? Mike Osman's call sign, 80-0-NR, I think is his call sign. He, he was given his talk at the uh, Tapper Banquet at uh, Dayton, not not this year, but but last year. And he, he said you know, people would come up to him, congratulate him on getting into ham radio. And, you know, we need more young people like you. And he said, how old do you think I am? He's in his 40s. All right, so I don't know what the young person qualification will be. I'll let you set that. So now, maybe it's not just a book. Maybe there's other ways to achieve getting young people interested in ham radio. Um, maybe it's a kit or a place to go for technology that uh, is not necessarily specifically ham radio oriented. I'm thinking of the company called Adafruit. Uh, and I, I would tell you that the, uh, the woman that started Adafruit um, by name, but I don't remember her name, but I know she's ham. <laughs> I got to get her on the show sometime if she's, she'd be willing to do, you know, this slumming here with ham radio now. Uh, they have lots of electronic stuff, and it's not it's not, not necessarily aimed at young people, but it would be, you know, something probably aimed at young people, I guess. Anyway, so uh, you know, maybe not just a book, maybe a kit, um, some something technology related, or what do you think? I can't really lead you down the garden path to this because you may have ideas that I'm not even thinking of, so I don't want to foreclose any options. What worked for you? What got you interested in ham radio when you got started? Now, some of you, if you're like me, and many of you are, knowing the age of my audience based on seeing the st statistics, <laughs> I can't say it, the statistics that come back to me from YouTube. I can see the demographics. And there's a big bubble in the demographics. In It starts in the 40s, a little bigger in the 50s, and then 60s is usually the biggest one. And a, a handful, a smattering of people in their 20s and a very sm small handful in their teens. And almost no women. You know, it's kind of like the average demographic of ham radio sort of kind of sad <clears throat> but that's the way it is so if you're like me you're old and what worked for you probably won't work for young people today and i can tell you that um i didn't need a book or a kit or inspiration i'm not sure where exactly my inspiration came from but the interest began when I was in my mm, early teens, 12, 13 years old, in the early 60s, 1963 or so. It's very convenient to have been born at the very tail end of 1949, basically 1950. So my age and the year of any given decade overlap pretty well. It's kind of easy to figure out when things happen. So 1963 or so, 64. You know, I, there, there was something that triggered my interest, or at least accelerated my interest. And it was getting the original Night Kit C100 walkie-talkie. And uh, let, me, uh, let me borrow my browser here for a second. Um, let's see if I can get, get that up here. Probably going to be able to find a picture for you. Yeah, sort of. There we go. Yeah, it's this blue one here on the right. That's the, uh, well. Okay, we're out of control. How do you run this crazy thing? Yeah, this one here on the right, um, this is an old ad somebody put up on YouTube, and, and it's probably the one that caught my attention. I don't think this red one was available at that time. I think it was just this one. It was a terrible radio. It was a, a, a regenerative or super regen receiver 
which meant it heard the whole two meter, two meter, <laughs> but a ham too long, H heard all of CB, all 23 channels at the time. And um, it transmit on uh, channel seven, one crystal, no, no options. So you would hear a lot of things or you'd hear some things and you might try to call them back. And that was useless because they weren't on channel seven, most likely. Channel 7 seemed to be the place that a lot of CB walkie-talkies ended up. So anyway, that was a uh, catalyst for me. I had some interest before that at, in this kind of thing, or the walkie-talkie probably wouldn't have worked. So what could you do today that would be an equivalent? I suppose, you know, an FRS radio, which is light years ahead of the C100 in terms of being a real radio. And I actually, I scan the FRS band when I'm driving in my car sometimes. If you've watched some of my on-the-road videos, you've seen me do that. And there's a little bit of kids playing on FRS. And by kids playing on FRS, I mean uh, whistles and shouts and strange noises. <laughs> uh, at least it's, you know, UHF, it's only going a half mile, so... Not too bad, but uh, but the, the kids are playing. But they, they clearly don't have any instruction. Should I admit what I've done once in a while? Figure out the tone that they're using and transmit back in my most authoritative voice. This is the Federal Communications Commission. Your transmissions on this frequency are unauthorized. Cease transmitting immediately. <laughs> Doesn't work. I pay no attention. So. My interest started there. It accelerated through CB to some extent, better walkie-talkies for a while, and then real CB radios. At about the same time as I was getting into that, I had been introduced to my first mentor, Elmer, if you must, uh, Bob, K9ZGT at the time. I was 13. He was, I think, 15, two years older than I was. But he'd been a ham for a uh, probably from when he was 13. So he was about two years into it, and he had assembled a real ham radio station. Uh, I think he had, it was an AM station, AM and CW, and I think he had uh, Hallicrafters stuff. And in sitting in a corner someplace, an old novice station. So when he interested me and my brother, Andy, who became WN9MAB, but a little before me, um, we had sort of inherited Bob's Nava station, a DX40 and a, um, it's a Heathkit DX40 and a Hammerland HQ110 receiver. Pretty good receiver for the day. And that uh, became the Nava station that, uh, that we used. And then when I upgraded to General, Andy, Andy's interest fell off. My, uh, my interest soared and upgraded to General and inherited Bob's DX100 to upgrade to a more powerful VFO uh, capable transmitter. So all that pretty interesting stuff for me. Don't know how, how interesting it is to you. But I'm, I'm thinking a lot of you similar uh, interest. So what I'm saying is that it just came to me. The interest, the magic of radio. No one really had to spur it. It sort of spurred on its own. My parents were not not hams and not knowledgeable in what all this stuff was. They were encouraging. They helped me, you know, with almost no money because I was a kid to acquire some stuff. They didn't just give me whatever I wanted, but they helped. And so they, they weren't in the way, but they didn't understand what it was all about. And my brother helped because, again, his interest in technology was parallel to mine. In fact, he went on to become really good engineer. Well, I w went on to become a really good button pusher, uh, the king of the appliance operators and never an engineer. So that's the kind of stuff that worked for me. I don't know that, that any of that necessarily applies today. It, um, it's maybe not much of a role model because again, no one really had to, to spur it to start the interest. They just, there was, you know, the path was greased a little bit. But I mostly made made my own path or looked for my own path. And I guess that is just not happening enough. 
because there's so much competition out there for interesting things to do for anyone who has that incipient or early interest in any kind of communications and technology. And it's not necessarily engineering, because again, I didn't pursue the engineering path, although I pursued the ham radio path. So it doesn't have to be engineering. We don't have to be making electrical engineers, although that's not, not a bad thing. That's fine. Let's go for them too. <laughs> Let's go, go for the big picture. What would work today? I don't know. I tried to get Marty, the ubiquitous young ham of um, all ham radio media. He showed up on uh, Skype, but he, but he didn't answer the he didn't answer the Skype phone. So, Marty, if you're tuned in, call me on Skype. Because he could speak for all young people, I'm sure. No, Marty is Marty is an old soul ham. Marty is. Uh, He's got those interests in, uh, he's got interest in, in the new stuff, but he, you know, he's, he's also absorbed in contests and sideband and all the stuff that us old hams are fascinated by. So I don't know. And there'll be young people that are interested in things like that, but I, I, th I think there's something that most of us old timers are missing that would attract young people. So looking for those ideas too. <clears throat> okay. So I, I've got, gotten plenty of that out. That's what I'm looking for. Now, how am I going to use it? Well, initially anyway, and maybe maybe I'll, I'll ever do, because I always have grand plans and rarely get to fulfill all of them or, or even most of them. What, what I'm planning on is for the Tapper Conference videos, again, this anonymous ham gave me 500 bucks and said, yeah, maybe pitch the idea of give a ham a book, give a kid a book, and get him into ham radio. So I... I'm expanding on that because I don't think that's going to go far enough. But I've got about 20 Tapper videos to build. Got one of them out already. But the but there's more in the pipeline. And I'm a fair long, fairly a long, long ways toward getting them done. Um, mostly, I've got all of the uh, the switching, all of the, the four camera switching and, and stuff done for everything except for the Sunday seminar. Which means... I got to go back and add titles and then re remember what the programs were about and then sit here in the studio, turn the lights on and record the introduction to each one. And in, in that introduction, it will say, join Tapper. We'll check out Chud and see what he's all about. And then the give a ham, no, give a kid a book part. And that's where this will come in because it's 15 to 30 seconds. It's going to be quick. Obviously, we can do not just a program, but a series of programs on these ideas. So they're going to be quick, 15 to 30 seconds or so. So you're spurred to action. You're going to say, yeah, okay, I think I can come up with something. Well, first of all, I would like it to be something that you have actually done. Now, most of us will have um, a few ideas that have been bubbling around in the back of our mind. Uh, and we think that they would be good ideas, but we've never actually accomplished them. We've never put them into action. A few of you out there have actually put something into action. You've led youth groups or maybe just mentored one young person, maybe one of your kids, and something something worked. So you can tell me what worked. Um, I would prefer to get that. If you just want to give me ideas, that's fine. I'm not going to turn anything away. I mean, it, it, I'm not necessarily going to use it, but I'll tell you where to put it, and other people can see it there. I'll tell you where to put it. It doesn't sound good. I'll tell you where to put it, and other people will see it there, and maybe someone else will say, what? No, that was a really good idea. Gary didn't want to use it, but I can use it and bring in a kid. So where to put these things? Uh, in... Um, <laughs> there have been Facebook videos and, and YouTube videos that say in the comment section below and the people always point down to that but that's the place this will be on YouTube you, I'll, I'm recording it yeah, I'm recording it so it'll go on YouTube so in the Facebook comments um, let's do it in the ham radio now group the public group have I still got that up here somewhere yeah this is this is the one I'm talking about this um Ham Radio Now public group. It's not an easy URL to find, 
but you can find it very easily just by going to the hamradionow.tv website, going all the way down to the bottom, and here are the links to the various social media that I'm such a master of. And if you click the F for Facebook, that takes you to the public group. I don't have anything that's pointing you to the, oops, to the page. Nothing on my calendar. Nothing, nothing is pointing you to the, uh, to the page. Um, the TV show. Where does it say TV show? I keep losing the TV show part of it. it says it somewhere. Anyway, th that's the one that says facebook.com slash ham radio now but it's pretty useless to me so because they keep they keep wanting me to do things like this boost your page for a hundred dollars that is not going to happen okay so just hammeredio.tv go down here and click the uh, the f the facebook thing and we'll get you to the group and and, and then below this thing where the, where it shows the live stream and you know, put in your your comments and then same thing on youtube um, this will show up on YouTube and, uh, and put in comments down there below. Maybe make a video, a little video of your own. 30 seconds. I don't want to have to edit these things down, you know, 30 seconds or so. Not or so. 30 seconds. Get out the stopwatch. 30 seconds. And just, and tell me or show me or whatever. Um, point to links. If you, if if what you're proposing can be, uh, it, you know, summarized in 15 to 30 seconds, but it's obviously got to take someone somewhere to go farther. So include the link or whatever, whether it's a website, a video, a book, um, be sure to include what that is. One last thought. Not all kids are going to be, going to want to become ham radio operators. Not all kids. Surprisingly enough, as much as we all like it, as fascinating as it is for us, not all kids are going to want to become hams. Not even all kids who are in technology, although I don't understand that. But I've worked in a bunch of places, TV stations and production companies and stuff, and they had engineers, the real engineers, the guys that could really build and design and fix things. And some of them were hams, but most of them were not. Some of them under, I was going to say my sphere of influence, but a combination of me and my primary mentor through my television career, George, W9AUM. Hey, George, you watching? George, George Sleminski. We called him Slomo. Um, not Shlomo, but Slomo. W9AUM. He, he's the one that, uh, that corralled me into the television business. And I'm very glad that he did. And so, so between the two of us, um, we encouraged a few of the other folks that we worked with, the engineering type folks, to get into ham radio. And there were um, a couple of other guys who were hams and a couple of the production companies that I worked at. But for all those people interested in communications and technology, we were a, a small minority. Not all kids, not even all kids with the bent toward some kind of technology, but some of them. And I think that the bottom line is they'll never be interested if they don't know about it. And if they find out a little bit about it, then maybe they become interested. All right. 30 seconds. 15 to 30 seconds. A little copy. A link to whatever the idea is where it's been successful. And I'm really warming up to this idea that you make me a little video. And I'll put it right in the show. You know, you'll, you'll get your face on Ham Radio now. Woo-hoo. Your, your lifetime's ambition fulfilled. Awesome. Comments below. Over and out. Jane, get me off this crazy thing.